Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Eric with Swiss by DFS and welcome to my DFS strategy video for the 2022 Arnold Palmer Invitational. Hopefully you had a chance to watch the preview video I put out yesterday as we went over everything required to find the optimal lineup. This video is all about hitting the optimal lineup. And of course that means we need to find the right players in order to do that. So if you haven't seen the preview video, I'll provide a link top right hand corner. Go watch that one, come back here. You'll have a better understanding of the players we're gonna choose in this video. We're also gonna have help from the sweet spot ranks, the marquee tee time pairings, and anchor buckets to really narrow down our player pool to really hone in on these players that will help us hit the optimal. Because it's all about aiming small. If we aim small, we miss small. And if we don't hit the optimal lineup, chances are we have a, or we have a good chance to hit the GPP winner. Before we actually get into it, I want to remind you guys of all the giveaways that I'm doing this week. Well, there, there are four. The first one being the subscriber giveaway. You can win up to $20 just by being subscribed and commenting down in the comment section. Give me your favorite two golfers this week. You'll get a free entry into this giveaway. And as long as we reach 320 subscribers by the end of the week, I will be running this giveaway. If we don't reach that goal, I'll just push it into next week's goal. So your entries will not be lost. Again, all you gotta do is comment down below in order to get a free entry. Another giveaway I'm doing is called the prize picks giveaway. This one's simple. Sign up with prize picks using the promo code sweet spot, put $20 in your account, and I'm going to give you $20. It's the best deal you're going to have in the industry. Everyone else just says, Hey, if you sign up using this code, you're going to get a deposit match. I'm also going to give you a deposit match as well up to $100. So I don't see anyone else giving away money to do this. I know it's kind of like a, uh, selling yourself short type of thing but hey it's all good it helps me out helps you guys out uh and if you want to try it for free that's an easy way to do it so you put 20 dollars in they're going to match your deposit you'll go up to 40 bucks you're going to get 20 dollars from me you're going to play prize picks for free and you're going to have 40 dollars. so there is a link in the description below i'm also giving away my cheat sheet which again, link in the description below, but that'll bring you right to this page, which you'll have two tabs down here. You'll have the cheat sheet, which I have to update with the odds and all the tee times and stuff. I'll do that at the end of this video or after I record this video, but you're gonna have the bucket system so you can follow along with me in this video. Uh, the dream sheets there, you can also follow along with me in this video. Let's go ahead and just hide this column. Uh, let's do it the other way around. Just give us some more things we can look at. But you're going to get all the information that I go over uh, in, this, in this video. So again, link in the description. Not only am I going to provide that, but you can also get your hands on this optimizer, which I'll be using at the end of the video. This helps really focus in on the sweet spot, you know, conditionals, the bucket system, all those things that we want to be using in our lineup building. It's all right here. And I'll explain a little bit more, but I also created a video on how to use this. So if you do want this, you just gotta be subscribed. Again, leave a comment down below. So you're just gonna have to follow the, the subscriber giveaway requirements. Leave a comment down below your favorite two golfers. And then you're gonna have to email me at sweetspotdfs at gmail.com. And just say, hey, I would like to use the optimizer and I will send it your way with kind of a tutorial video on how to use it. So those are the four giveaways, pretty lengthy I know. Let's get into this thing. The very first thing to talk about is the sweet spot ranks. So I already have it sorted by rankings and for you guys that are unaware of how I do my rankings every single week, we're looking at official world golf ranking, Bermuda grass stats. The overalls go back to 2013. Last year is just one full year worth of data on Bermuda grass. I'm also looking at course history, bogey avoidance, birdie or better. These three stats are recent form stats, so it's within the last seven weeks. We're looking at DraftKings average, recent form. This is their average finishing position and average scoring or their average scores throughout the tournaments that they play in. And then season long, we're looking at DK average, scoring average, rounds under 70%, cut made percentage, and DK top 10 percentage. All of that comes out to give us a score, and based off that score, we have a rank. You can see the differences between one and two, uh, two and three, 
Wait a minute. Something is not right. I think... Oh, I know why. Um... Here, we're going to do this real quick. I do this while we are recording. So I don't have uh, an active formula in here. It's just static. So when the filter gets off of this, it'll go right back. So here we go. You're going to see the updates right away. This way I won't confuse anybody. All right. So here you can see the difference between one and two, two, three, and four all super close to each other. So Rom far and away above Scheffler, Rory, and Hovland, and then you can see the rest. We're not going to talk about all of those. Um, but scrolling back here, really when, when we uh, filter by ranking, what I want to see is kind of some plays that stand out more than others. And for whatever reason, DraftKings and myself have similar rankings. Scotty Scheffler uh, maybe the, the biggest value, at least in the 10k range, but I really don't see anything that's super huge down here. Um, it's nice to see some of these $8,000 golfers up here. Uh, Justin Rose, Seamus Power, and Kevin Na. Seeing 7k golfers up here is good, because if I sort by salary, you can see what, uh, the bottom of the page without scrolling is $8,100. So if we see anyone cheaper than $8,100 make it into this list, that would be kind of, you know, really good value. So again, Rose, Power, and Kevin Na end up being those golfers that look to be pretty decent value in that mid-range. Uh, but nothing really stands out when it comes to rankings. So again, my ranks and the DraftKings salary ranks pretty much uh, in line, which doesn't really surprise me. I, I think I use a lot of the same stats that DraftKings uses, so not a big deal there. Uh, what I use these rankings, or I should say I use these rankings in several ways. One of them is to determine marquee tee time pairings. So if I scroll by game, you're going to see all of the pairings in order from the morning round down to the afternoon round, starting on hole one and then hole 10. You can see that they're all ordered by game. Now, if the golfers in that very first group, if their rankings collectively are under a threshold then they are considered a marquee tee time pairing and my threshold or what the criteria is for that the number of golfers in the field which is 120 this week multiplied by 59 percent it's just an arbitrary number 59 is a really good number in golf you know it could be 60 doesn't matter 59 is is what i'm looking at that number gets you close to 71 so collectively if their ranks are in 71 i'm highlighting their group or the rankings next to the golfers in dark green. Now you see in this very first group, there's a light colored font there. That means they're honorable mention. So if I go ahead and I filter by color, you're going to see, you know, this lighter font with the darker font. The darker fonts are your marquee tea time pairings. So if I go by text color and we go here, oh, my bad. I thought it was going to do... I can't do both. That's super unfortunate. I thought I was going to be able to. All right. Well, that's unfortunate. Wow. Okay. Well, we'll I'll learn how to, we'll figure out a way to, to sort through this. But anyways, here are your marquee tea time pairings. There are a total of four of them. So here in the black font. And you got Matsuyama Homa List, Scheffler Zalatoris M, Hovland, Horschel, Hoagie. Wow, the three H's. Pretty cool. Uh, Rom, Burns, and Garcia. Uh, you're going to have to check with Chad Eckert. I think there was a Ho-Ho-Ho group that was in the winning GPP lineup last year somewhere. Was it at this event? I don't remember what it is. Oh, I think I have to send a tweet out there just to see if that's a thing. Anyways, um, there are four. Marky T time pairings. There are five honorable mentions. And really, I wanted to get as close to 10 lineups in total as possible because that's what I currently have the optimizer looking at. Unfortunately, I just haven't been able like I I couldn't get to 10. There's not there's not a close tenth as compared to the ones that 
I have found. The whole goal behind this, the whole reason is we rarely find two golfers. Or no, 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 no. Let me rewind. Let me rewind. The whole goal of this is most of the time when we do Mark ET temp pairings, we find at least two golfers that are in the optimal lineup. So of the four that we see, I'll be honest, four is not a good number. When I when it's been this low for Mark ET time pairings, chances are we usually see one. Not so much chances are. Most of the time we see one. We don't see two. I, I'm still going to go with two, um, although it's not going to be super... I don't know. It's not going to be like something I absolutely have to do. Um, but I think I do want one. And the whole... Uh, uh, another rule I should say that goes behind this is you don't want to find two golfers in the same group. Now, last week at the Honda Classic, we did have two golfers from the same group be in the optimal lineup. Uh, it wasn't these two. I'm just I'm just highlighting this for you guys to easily, um, you know, visualize it. But let's say Matsuyama and Homa, I wouldn't put them in a group together. Like the the uh, the probability that they're going to be in the optimal lineup together is very very low and as long as i've done this which is uh i think about a year now i've only seen three instances you know out of what 52 weeks where we've seen two golfers from the same group actually no two instances not three two instances where we've seen two golfers from the same group in the optimal lineup so highly encourage you guys if you are building lineups do not pair golfers up in the same group again you can use my cheat sheet uh, to find out those those groupings those pairings You can also find it out by using the optimizer because I will have that built in and we'll go over that here shortly But of all these groups, you know, if you like Matthew Fitzpatrick Don't pair him up with Tringali and Stallings. That's what I wouldn't do uh, Instead pair him up like a Scotty Scheffler or Matthew Fitzpatrick might be a bad idea because that's an honorable mention group But Scotty Scheffler, I'm not gonna pair up with Zalatoris or M I'm going to look at the other groups. Maybe I'll pair them up with Hovland or Horschel or even Tom Hoagie or maybe Sam Burns or Sergio Garcia. So out of those four groups, I'm probably just picking two at most and at least one. But I don't think I can get there with three. It, it is possible. I just don't. I don't know. I don't think I'm going to risk it. Um, and that goes with all groups, not just the marquee tee time pairing. So any golfers that are grouped together... I just pick one from each of them and go from there. Um, and that's something I built into the optimizer. Again, we'll talk about that. But what I want to go from here is right into anchor buckets to really try to figure out where we want to be pulling golfers from. And I'm going to tell you all the golfers that come from these buckets. So the very first thing that I'm going to do, uh, and you can do this with the cheat sheet as well, just uh, go to the filter that's up here, go to the bucket system filter, I like to go in by condition, filter by, greater than or equal to 0.9. I, I like to give a little leeway. I don't want to go strict to one, but point, point 0.9. This means we want at least one golfer from these buckets. Now, I like to go into the max projections and put at least two. So greater than or equal to two. And this will narrow it down just a little bit more. If you really want to get, uh, I'm going to hide some of this stuff to make it easier for us to look at. If you really want to get more narrow than that, what I would suggest is just take zeros out of the optimal lineups over here in the minimums. Because what this is telling you is if there is a zero, there have been years where zero golfers were in the optimal lineup from the buckets you see on the screen. And basically we would really be narrowing down if we do that. And we're only looking at these five buckets. So this is a really good way to narrow it down. But I don't, you don't have to do that. Uh, I used to, and I would miss out on a lot of these golfers. I just look at the projections now, which seem to be pretty accurate. You could also just take out any of the zeros from the minimums inside the top 10 frequencies. That could also work. But we do have quite a bit of buckets to go through. So, last year ones. We'll look at that first. And again, you have the access on your cheat sheets to look at this. 
Um, let me make sure all the filters are off. So last year ones. Now the buckets say we want to select one to three from here. So I think two is a really good shot to have happening. There aren't a lot of golfers in this bucket. There are 16. And just to kind of name this bucket, it's your top 20s from last year. So you want one to three of them. Well, there's a lot of good golfers to choose from. I think I'm just crossing out steel right away. Um, I don't care for Matt Wallace, although I know he ranks really well for a lot of people. Same goes with Andrew Putnam. Don't really care, but you know, Fitzpatrick gets a bump on the list. Rory does, Hideki, Zalatoris. These are all golfers that I can get behind. Uh, and I really don't mind a lot of these guys in the middle. I don't want to talk about everybody because I don't want this video to be super long. I just want to kind of go over, you know, basically a summary of this. So last year ones, a really good bucket to choose from. Uh, last year sixes, actually, here's a good way to really find your anchor buckets. Let's just go in from this year. How many golfers are in these buckets? Let's go less than 30. I think that's probably going to be the easiest way to really narrow down our player pools. Yeah, okay. Um, so we already went through last year ones. We're not gonna talk about any of the last year buckets. Let's go to course history twos. So this is that 20 to 40 range over the last eight years. Uh, Hideki Matsuyama, we just talked about him in the last year one bucket. Uh, same with Matthew Fitzpatrick. And then you also see Jason Kokrak up there. The more you see golfers in these anchor buckets, it, it doesn't guarantee they're going to be inside the top 10 or in the optimal lineup. It just improves their chances. So that's all I want you guys to get from that. But, you know, we have 17 golfers that are $7,000 and above that you can choose from. And we want somewhere between one to three. Remember, course history two, somewhere between one to three. Um, I think two is a safe bet. Uh, I wouldn't do a lot of threes. So if you are on, you know, three or more of these golfers, dial it back a little bit, especially if you want to win a GPP. If you're looking just to cash and your cash games, that's fine. You can select as many as you want. But if you want to win a GPP, probably best just to select three at most. But try to, you know, even scale it down to two. Um, Jason Day is in here. I like Jason Day. I also like Adam Scott. Uh, Mark Leishman, Matt Fitzpatrick, Hideki. These are all names I really, really like. But again... I would say just scale it back. Uh, now, is it possible that this this bucket could actually have more golfers in it than what I'm projecting? Absolutely. And, and what I mean by that is more golfers inside the top 10 than what I have projected. Yes, absolutely. But when it looks at optimal lineups and top 10s, my bucket system is 94% on average correct when it comes to these projections. So just throwing that out there. Um. So those are your course history twos. Looking at recent form ones. Uh, what recent form ones are your best recent form averages? So over the last seven weeks, anybody that has an average finishing position of 20 or lower, that would be in this bucket. We have Rom, McElroy, Scheffler, Matsuyama, Will Zalatoris, Fitzpatrick, Horschel, Casey, O'Hare, Sean O'Hare. Fits in the spot. I, I wouldn't. Uh, don't worry about that. Um, that's crazy. Really? He has one 16th place finish. Okay. Uh, anyways. How many do we want from here? We want somewhere between one to three. Once again. One to three. This is a very small group. Nine golfers in it. Um, we, hit, we see 100% inside the top 10. 50% in, in optimal lineup. So here's another good way to look at this too. When you come back or when you look at this, we cro cross reference this zero to one, zero min max one. So I guess really there's a chance that Rom and McElroy or any of these 10 K golfers could finish inside the top 10, but not be in the optimal lineup. It's, it's very possible. So it really just makes me feel more comfortable playing the likes of John Rom. McElroy, Scheffler, and Matsuyama. Those four golfers inside the 10K range, uh, I know there aren't many. I think there's only five, but I, I feel pretty confident playing them. And I mean, the same is going to go with Zalatoris, Fitzpatrick. I mean, of these six golfers, they're probably going to make, like, I'll have 100% of my lineups have one of these six golfers in it, most likely. 
Uh, if you want to be a little contrarian, here you go. You can you can put some of these golfers in. Horschel, Casey, or O'Hare. Uh, the other bucket in that recent form is your twos. We want somewhere between one to three here as well. Uh, this one is a little bit bigger, but it has cheaper golfers in it. So you might find a lot of your value plays in this bucket if you're going that route. Uh, Mark Leishman is your most expensive guy at 9,100. Uh, I like a lot of these guys. Leishman, Scott, Homa, Henley, can't go wrong. Uh, Garcia I really like. Kind of a little wary about uh, Jason Kokrak, although he is 11th in my model. Not terrible. I do like Jason Day quite a bit. Um, I do like Justin Rose. I like Mab McNeely. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to go over everybody, but there are really good names in here you can choose from, but Bucket System says one to three of them. So... Again, I wouldn't go more than three. I, I think it's a safe bet that you can put your limit at three. Uh, looking at the next ones, 10 and 8Ks, we can talk about that when we we go into the buck or into the optimizer. I'm not going to spend a lot of time now doing it. Stroke chain one, all stats are positive. So all your stroke chain stats, off the tee, approach, around the green, putting, they're all positive. Uh, and we only have a select amount of golfers here. They're all highlighted in this green color, by the way. So the coloring for these buckets are all based off the strokes gain column. It's just easier to, to kind of navigate that way. These are usually your best golfers. So I'm looking at somewhere between one to three from this bucket as well. So again, Rom, McElroy, Scheffler, we've talked about them ad nauseum now. Uh, Henley's been talked about quite a bit. McNeely. I think, you know, one to three of these golfers, you, you probably want to start your lineups here, maybe, uh, unless these guys are a little too expensive for your taste, which I, I don't care. I think we're going to see a 10K golfer inside the top 10. It's just an easy way to start your builds. It really limits the amount of uh, combinations you can build with your lineups. And yeah, I think that's just easier when it comes to lineup building. Having more choices makes it harder. It might feel more freeing, but as you start building, you're just... I feel like you, there's a dread that comes over you. Like you want all of the golfers you possibly can in your lineups. How do you do that to make sense? So I like limiting you know, the the amount of combinations you can build because it's it to me it's just more freeing. But if you want to make it easy on yourself, highly suggest you guys take me up on the offer of getting this optimizer. Again, all you gotta do. Comment down below your favorite two golfers. Be subscribed to the channel and email me at sweetspotdfs at gmail.com. Just tell me you would like to use this optimizer. I will send you the optimizer. I will send you a video on how to use it. Uh, it's up to date. I just created it yesterday. So it's going to go over a lot of the things uh, that I'm going to be talking about here. Now, for me, you know, what I would do right away, I have a lot of this already built in. I was messing around with it a little bit earlier. In this box, I call this the conditional box. This is where you set your conditions based off of the buckets. So you can see your last year buckets here. I have a min for one and a min for six. That means I want the optimizer to select at least one golfer from this bucket and one golfer from this bucket. And I do that for all of these down here. Now there are two new additions. I have the 6K all. So I'm telling the optimizer, I want at least, you know, whatever 6K golfers in here. Uh, I want no more than two. I'm not going to set this to one or two yet, but if you want a 6K golfer in your lineup, you just go come here uh, and update this. If you want you know, to be a little bit more narrow focused on what type of 6K golfer you want, so I have 6K or 6 or 6.5 and above. That's what this bucket means. I know this one says 6.5 and below, but this really means below 6.5. So it's 6.4 and below. Um, I have these set to one because I really don't want to see like how I had it before is if I had this set to two, um, and say this at two, sometimes it would select three, six keg offers. It would select two from here and one from there. I don't want that. I just want the optimizer to select somewhere between a high six K or a low six K. And if they want to combine it, or if the optimizer wants to combine both of them, that's fine. If you at home don't want this. All you gotta do is come here and put a zero there. That's as simple as that. And I go over this in that video on how to use the optimizer, but 
Um, that's how I have. This is the new edition. That's why I have it in red. Um, you can set this to whatever you want. Whatever you set as your max is here. This is going to be your most, um, your most strict buckets here. I will say this too. Don't let uh, your minimums here in these buckets. So if I had two and two, don't let the equal amount of this be larger than your max for 6k all because you're just going to break the optimizer that way the other one that i added i talked about this last week are these group numbers i only have 10 groups set up right now but what it looks at is whatever you have numbered in this group um column here i do this by t times so everyone that has the same number is in the same t time so matt fitzpatrick cameron Chingali, and i think someone way down here right uh, Scott Stallings. They're all in a group together. So they're group one because they go off the earliest. I'm saying don't pick more than one of those guys. And I do that for everyone, all the other T10 pairings here. Eventually, I'm going to get through all of these groups if I can, if the optimizer allows me to. Sometimes it's finicky and it, it only allows so many. But I'm going to build up to 50 groups that you can, you can make. Um, I'm not going to waste any more time talking about it. Again, I created a video on it. You guys can go look at it. But for this video, um, we're, I have all the conditionals set from the anchor buckets we talked about, um, even a little bit past those anchor buckets that had at least one in the minimum projections. Again, you can look at that in the cheat sheet. But if we go from here, let me show you the most optimal lineup. Just by selecting run optimizer, this is with all the sweet spot defaults, the score that's included in it, it starts with Scotty Scheffler, goes down to Mark Leishman, Paul Casey, Rose, Seamus Power, and Garrick Higo. Um, actually, I think I have something in there that we don't need. Yeah, the 9K. We don't need a 9K golfer. So let's see if that actually changes it. And it does. It, it removes a 6K golfer because we no longer need a 9. And now goes Scheffler, Kokrak, Paul Casey, Rose, Power, Na. So it does include Casey, Rose, and Power like it did before, as well as Scotty Scheffler. But we took out Mark Leishman for Kokrak and substituted um, Kevin or Eric Higo with Kevin Na. Uh, so that would be the most optimal lineup. Now, you know me, I like to go 10, 9, 8, 7, 7, 6. So if we do that, let's see who it will select. What would the optimizer select? Well, it, we already knew it was the Higo thing. What if we don't want Mark Leishman as our 9K golfer? And it just, it switches a couple around. Now we have Adam Scott and Cameron Davis. Okay. What if, let's just see what the most optimal John Rom golfer or lineup is. So we're still keeping Casey and Rose in there, but now we're, we have Adam Scott. I like this lineup quite a bit. Maybe not a huge fan of Hudson Swafford in this position, but that's okay. My optimizer creates unique lineups, so it's showing that this is the lowest valued golfer. So all I have to do is run optimizer one more time, and we're going to see a new low 6K. And I don't mind this. Like, I do like Leishman, Davis Riley. He's a good Southeast guy. You know, I think he went to school at Georgia. I don't mind having someone like Riley in there. Uh, if I hit this again, though, let's see what the next one's going to be. Charles Hall III. I don't know how I feel about that, but that's how it goes. And if you keep seeing, seeing some of these guys and you don't want them in your lineup, you can come down here like Paul Casey, just hit no. Justin Rose, we can just say... I'm going to clear out the rest because this is how the unique optimizer does things. But let me go ahead and run it one more time for a John Rom lineup. And now we put in Kokrak, Power, Na, and Brendan Steele. I, don't, I do not like Brendan Steele this week, so we're just going to skip that. And there you go. Uh, you can also, like, I, I don't mind advocating. So you can see Rom is in group 9. Just don't pair him up with another 9 uh, grouping. But I could go to, like... Matt Fitzpatrick. Like, we like Matt Fitzpatrick. Let's see uh, uh, the best Rom and Fitzpatrick lineup. It's probably going to include Rose or Casey. Yeah, it does. 
Higo, McCarthy, interesting. Okay. Uh, same thing can be done with like Rory McIlroy, you know, maybe like Rory. Uh, one thing that makes me sad is Rory is paired up with Adam Scott. My dummy lineup was like my favorite lineup. It had McElroy and Scott in it. Now I'm not going to play. I'll play one. Out of 100 lineups, I don't mind playing one McElroy and Scott lineup. But I am a firm believer you don't pair these guys up together. As much as they might draft off each other in certain rounds, um, I'm just, I've seen the data now where I'm, I'm just not, I'm not willing to play those percentages. Like it's, it's very low that two golfers of the same group will be in the optimal lineup, let alone the GPP winning lineup. So we're going to go ahead and just skip out on that, but it's, I can still play a Fitzpatrick lineup. I really like that. Uh, I don't mind trying a, a McElroy Fitzpatrick lineup. Although Fitzpatrick, remember, is not a marquee tee time pairing. Um, why don't we just actually first look at that? So, um, maybe we go with like a Will Zalatoris. Let's let's do that. Uh, the Zally man, as I like to call him. So McElroy and Zalatoris. Two guys in the uh, the marquee tee time pairings paired up with Casey Rose, Nah Shank. Okay, uh, I don't care to see this that much. I don't mind Justin Rose, but I cannot do like a Kevin Nah. I can't do it with all those guys. There's no way. Power Kisner. I don't like Brendan Grace. Come on. I really don't like Kokrak here either. All right. I'm very tempted just to put Sam Burns in there. Bengali Rose Power Center. Okay, that's gross too. Burns is going in. I don't mind that. Davis Riley, I like as a 6K golfer. It's a decent lineup. Okay. So I don't think there's anything else that I really want to do when it comes to building lineups. I don't necessarily mean to go throughout all of the possible lineups you can do. I just want to showcase the optimizer. So if you want to use this, uh, at least you can see how it works. Um, again, it's using all of the bucket cr uh, criteria that I have. And, and if I'm being honest, some of my favorite plays, Rory McIlroy, I know that's going to be a lot of people's favorite plays. You, I don't think you can go wrong with Rom, McElroy, Scheffler, Matsuyama to start your lineups. And then Zalatoris seems like a good play, as well as Fitzpatrick. Leishman shows up a bunch. I don't mind Adam Scott. Sam Burns isn't showing up a lot. I have to force the optimizer to select that. But I do like Sam, Sam Burns this week. Um, really nobody in the 8K range outside of Kokrak and Paul Casey. And Tringali, I suppose. Uh... The optimizer wasn't selecting anybody from that range. And then there's a lot of good golfers here down in the 7K range. It's kind of a crapshoot there, but I do feel like you want a 10, 9, 8, 7, 7, 6 lineup or a 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 6 lineup. Those are usually your common trends for optimal lineups as well as GPP winning lineups. Um, but it's all up to you guys. I'm just trying to give the best possibility of finding the optimal lineup based off of my research because that's what i that's what i specialize in trying to find the perfect lineup if not trying to find the gpp winning lineup which i know all of us are doing but no one's doing it in the structure that i think is necessary it's just you know playing your own losers as some people like to say but i'm really liking mcelroy really liking fitzpatrick uh rom is also another good choice too so we're going to end the video there. We'll keep it short. Usually these are 40 minutes long, but hey, let's keep it at 30. Rem uh, reminder, giveaways. You can win $20. Got to be subscribed. Leave a comment down below. Um, and you'll get a free entry into this. We have to hit 320 subscribers. So if you're not yet subscribed, please do so uh, before we run this giveaway. And then obviously prize picks. Again, link in the description below. It'll get you straight to the sign up page with that promo code sweet spot already populated. So you don't even have to type it in um, and then put a deposit of $20 in your account. And I will be giving you $20 so you can play for free. 
Prize picks will match that deposit, giving you another 20, so you have 40 in your account. You're playing prize picks for free with $40. Uh, and then obviously the optimizer, the cheat sheet, cheat sheet link is in the uh, description as well. That's all I have for you guys. So I appreciate you guys watching. Again, thanks. Uh, leave a like, comment, subscribe if you liked all this stuff, and we'll see you in the next one. All right, bye.